All right, we're going to get going here with the Week 2 press conference with offensive line coach and offensive coordinator Mike Blush ahead of Cal's road trip to Auburn to face the Tigers on Saturday at Jordan-Hare Stadium. We will get started with Jeff Brado from the Cal Sports Report. Mike, how you doing today? Hey, Jeff. Hey, can you give us an evaluation of what you thought about the play of each of your quarterbacks? Just break them down a little bit and, and what you're looking for uh, going forward. Yeah, I thought, you know, they both did some good things. Obviously, both did some things that they'd like to have back uh, from an execution standpoint. Um, you know, obviously, Fernando threw it a little bit more than Chandler uh, just because of the play count, really. You know, we planned to get those guys equal reps going into the game and kind of the way the game played out, it didn't quite work out for us. But uh feel very confident in both of those guys still and uh, looking forward to watching them continue to grow. Is it likely we'll see both of them again Saturday? I think so. Thank you. We'll go to Cody Henderson from the league winners next. Hey, Coach, two-part question here. But given some of the injuries already on the offensive line, what's your overall assessment of how they played on Saturday? And where do you think they can improve for this week against Auburn? Yeah, not to our standard. I uh, was obviously a little bit disappointed um, after, after game one with some of the situational football things that arose. Um, and injuries are part of the game, you know, and, and that's that was the battle cry. And what I talked to those guys about Sunday is it doesn't matter who's in the game. We have a standard and expectation of how things are supposed to get done. And uh, I expect us to bounce back and play much better this week. Matt Marino from Cal Rebels. Morning, Coach. What was it like for you to just be back, you know, calling plays? And was there any rust to get off? And what was kind of things like with just the iPads, the helmet communication, all the kind of operational stuff? Yeah, no, it was great. I mean, obviously, I, I uh, intended to call more than 22 plays in the first half, you know, and I think the big the big takeaway for us as we sat down and watched it as a staff is, you know, the difference between really good football and, and not good football is about this much. It's, you know, one guy taking the wrong wrong step on a on a pass set. It's it's one guy at the top of his route, not coming back towards the quarterback. So all correctable things. Uh, but we know that offensively, once we get the first first down and we get the drive started, we can dictate the tempo. And I felt like when we did that, we played up to our standard. But obviously, too many three and outs, uh, situational third downs was not good. Uh, we were good on fourth down and we were good in the red zone. So that was some positives to take away from game one. We'll go to Thomas Dunn for right California. Good morning, Mike. Uh, a lot of musical chairs with your offensive line unit. How do you evaluate what they have in done and then knowing that you may have more at your disposal coming this week yeah i mean that's my my job is to try to find the best five so i mean what whatever it whatever it takes we've got to put our most talented and our best players on the field so if that means moving some guys around um and and working working some different guys in at different situations uh we're going to do that i mean at the end of the day uh, we have to put our best players on the field. And when, you know, one guy goes down then it's always a reevaluation of who's the next guy up, because if, you know, maybe your sixth best old lineman going into a game is your backup left guard, but your right tackle goes down, then, you know, there's going to be some, some shuffling that goes on in situations like that. So that's something we sit down and address every Sunday, uh, you know, after the game and going into the next week and obviously something that we're going to continue to evaluate as this week goes on. We'll go to Jake Curtis from the Cowboys Report. Uh, yeah, Mike, were any surprises in your uh, mind as far as uh, players on the offensive side, particularly at wide receivers, Scott? Yeah, I mean, I don't think I was surprised at all by Isaiah Hunter. You know, he was a guy that we pointed out at the end of fall, fall camp. Uh, I mean, just had been consistent, never missed a practice, worked his tail off every single day during fall camp. And then to see him come and, uh, you know, play – the type of game he played, have the big catch, back shoulder throw from Fernando, have the fourth down touchdown catch. It was awesome to see a guy get rewarded for uh, for for the work that he had put in. And, you know, those other guys I thought were solid. It was great to see Maven Anderson back out there kind of doing his thing. I thought Jonathan Brady showed some explosiveness, especially on that tunnel screen in the first half. Um, and then Mikey Matthews uh, came in and made a couple really nice plays. So I think as we continue to get more and more guys back and we, we have more depth, I think that's going to be very, very beneficial to us moving forward. We'll go back to Jeff. Mike, a lot of attention on the 
Auburn offense score on all those points, but tell us what you're seeing when you look at tape of their defense. Yeah, I think their defense is very sound. Obviously, a really solid group. DJ Durkin's done a great job everywhere he's been. Got a ton of respect for him and their their defensive staff. I mean, when you look down, uh, you know, their depth chart, I mean, the first thing that sticks out is obviously the size of the of the people that they're playing with. I mean, we're going to be uh, playing some guys inside that are 323, 340 pounds. Uh, there's going to be some big boys in there. And then, um, you know, their their defensive ends, their edge players, uh, Falk and uh, McLeod are, are really good players. So it's going to be a great challenge for us. I think they're solid across the board. They have really good linebackers. They have really good uh, defensive backs. Um, but our guys are excited about the matchup and ready to go execute at a higher level than we did last week. Thank you. We'll go back to Matt Moreno. How did you assess the play at running back? You had some different guys in there, some different things go on, positive, negative. How did you assess the, the play at that position? Yeah, we've got to be better there. I mean, in the run game as a whole, we did not uh, it, we did not play up to my standards and up to our standards as an offense. So, um, you know, I challenged those guys. I mean, it's, it's everybody. It's O-line, it's tight ends, it's running backs, and it's receivers. I mean, everybody's got to be involved in us being able to be efficient in the run game. And uh, I know that they've really – taking that challenge to heart and uh, we, we had a really good practice today. So I was excited about that. We'll go to Steve Croner from the SF Chronicle. Hey Mike, this is kind of basically the same question you just got to ask me, but I'll, I'll phrase it a different way. Obviously Jaden's your guy and coach said that Jaden is probable for Saturday. If Jaden somehow is not available, what is your uh, rotation at running back then? Yeah, I mean, we'll have we'll still have uh, Jet, we'll still have the Jet Thomas, we'll have uh, Callaway, and we'll have Cardwell. So those three guys will have to carry the load, and and they got to step up. So, you know, um, they're here for a reason. They're here on scholarship, and we expect them to to carry the torch uh, with or without Jaden. Thank you. 